What's really interesting about hypnosis is that it increases areas of the brain that are responsible for deep relaxation, focus, and self-awareness, this interoception, simultaneously. Andrew Huberman knows a secret that only 1% of the billions of people in the world know. In the video, he shares some small but crucial tips to help us improve ourselves. It's essentially opening up pathways that allow you to change your brain in the ways that you want. There are many other natural and other healthier ways to live a fulfilling life. And that's not even the tip of the iceberg. For me, I tend to wake up sometime around 6 a.m., 6.30, sometimes as late as 7 a.m. The first thing I do after I wake up is I take the pen that's on my nightstand and the pad of paper on my nightstand, and I write down the time in which I woke up. I put my phone on airplane mode about an hour before I go to sleep. And then I set my alarm typically for 6.30 a.m. And some days the alarm wakes me up. Other days I wake up before the alarm. And yes, some days the alarm goes off and I hit snooze a few times. And then usually by 7 a.m. I am up and out of bed. The reason for writing down what time I wake up is because I want to know that average wake up time. That average wake up time informs what's called my temperature minimum. It tells me when my body temperature was lowest. The temperature minimum is the time in each 24 hour cycle that your body temperature is lowest. I know that the lowest temperature that my body will be at across the 24 hour cycle tends to be two hours before my typical wake up time. I don't care what my actual temperature is, I care when my lowest temperature is. So I highly recommend that you write down when you wake up or track that in some way that works for you and use that as a reference point to determine your temperature minimum. You can leverage the temperature minimum for several things, shifting your clock, shifting your circadian sleep schedule and wake schedule, also for shifting your eating schedule, etc. But Even if you don't travel, even if you don't care about things like jet lag, even if you sleep fabulously all year round, never have a poor night's sleep, knowing your temperature minimum, that time when your temperature is at its lowest point, is a valuable thing to know. For humans and for animals, there's a phenomenon whereby when we generate our own forward motion, forward ambulation, visual images pass by us on our eyes, so-called optic flow. And for those of you that are low vision or no vision, the same phenomenon occurs in the auditory system. Sounds pass by us in so-called auditory flow. Getting into a mode of forward ambulation and especially experiencing visual flow has a powerful effect on the nervous system. The effect it has is essentially to quiet will reduce the amount of neural activity in this brain structure called the amygdala. Amygdala means almond, and many of you have probably heard about the amygdala for its role in anxiety and fear and threat detection. And indeed, the amygdala is part of the network in the brain that generates feelings of fear and threat and anxiety. It does a bunch of other things too, but that's one of its primary functions. Forward ambulation, walking or biking or running, and generating optic flow in particular has this incredible property of lowering activity in the amygdala and thereby reducing levels of anxiety. So for me, this process of taking a walk each morning isn't about exercise. It's not about burning calories. It's not about any of that. It's really about getting into optic flow and reducing the levels of amygdala activation. I'm a big believer based on quality peer reviewed data that hydration is essential for mental performance. As many of you know, neurons require ionic flow. What that means is neurons need sodium, they need magnesium, and they need potassium in order to function. We do tend to get dehydrated at night. Even if the day is not very hot, I try and top off or I try and make sure that I'm hydrated early in the day before I begin any work. I purposely delay my caffeine intake to 90 minutes to 120 minutes after I wake up. The reason I delay caffeine is because one of the factors that induces a sense of sleepiness is the buildup of adenosine in our system. The buildup of adenosine accumulates the longer we are awake. So when I wake up in the morning, when you wake up in the morning, your adenosine levels are likely to be very low. However, 
Caffeine is an adenosine blocker. It's actually a competitive antagonist for you aficionados. It sort of parks in the receptor that adenosine normally would park at and prevents adenosine from acting on that receptor. That's why you feel more alert because it's essentially blocking the effect of this sleepiness factor that we all create called adenosine. The reason for delaying caffeine intake 90 minutes to two hours after waking is I want to make sure that I don't have a late afternoon or even early afternoon crash from caffeine. A lower level of adenosine is able to create a greater level of sleepiness. It took me years to figure this out. I used to wake up and I'd think, oh, I don't want to drink caffeine too close to bedtime, so I'm going to start drinking my caffeine really early. I let my cortisol naturally come up in the morning. I avoid drinking caffeine until about 90 minutes or two hours after waking. And when I do that, I find that I don't experience the afternoon crash. Delaying caffeine to 90 minutes to two hours optimizes this relationship between adenosine and wakefulness and sleepiness in a way that really provides a nice consistent arc of energy throughout the day and brings energy down as I'm headed toward sleep and falling asleep. Fasting increases levels of adrenaline, also called epinephrine in the brain and body. And when our levels of epinephrine and adrenaline are increased, we learn better, we can focus better. There's terrific data supporting that. You don't want epinephrine, aka adrenaline, too high. That feels like stress and panic. You get jittery, you can't focus. But in its optimal range, adrenaline really provides a heightened sense of focus and the ability to encode, meaning bring in and retain, remember information. Many people ask, in fact, there's a whole community and discussion boards, etc., and YouTube comments on the internet about what breaks a fast and what doesn't. The fact of the matter is that's going to be highly individual because it's going to depend on how sensitive your blood sugar is. And more, more accurately, it's going to depend on things like your insulin sensitivity. So for instance, if you're somebody who gets up in the morning, hydrates and goes out for a six mile run, you could probably eat a jar of almond butter and still be what's called fat fasted. Your insulin levels will still be very low because even though that is a large volume of almond butter, even to me, that large number of calories come from a source that doesn't increase blood sugar very much and insulin very much. So you get the idea. It's going to depend on your recent eating history, your blood sugar history, your glycogen stores, etc. So if anyone tells you that breaks a fast or that doesn't, that's kind of silly. Would one grain of sugar break your fast? No. Would an entire tablespoon of sugar break your fast? Yes. You'll get a big blip in blood sugar and insulin from that. However, how long that lasts, how long it breaks your fast will depend on how glycogen depleted you are and a number of other factors. When our eyes are directed upward, literally when our eyelids are open, no surprise there, and when our eyes are directed upward, it creates a state of heightened alertness. And this has a relationship to the brainstem neurons that create alertness and their control over the muscles of the eye and believe it or not, the eyelids. Now, it's not the case that if you are absolutely exhausted and you need to feel more alert, that looking upward is going to make you feel wide awake, although it will help support your levels of alertness. The point here is that you can optimize your workstation in a physical way 